So today let's try salvaging some laptop batteries and getting free lithium ion cells. The last time I was salvaging this one, it contained three lithium ion cells and only one of them was actually bad. The other two were completely okay. This one says 11.1 volts and 2.12 amp hours. There were three cells in series. Each of them was 3.7 volts and each of them was 2.12 amp hours. In total this battery pack makes 11.1 volts and the total capacity still is 2.12 amp hours because they are in series. And because they are in series, if one of them goes out, the entire battery pack fails. And this is what happened in this one. And this is also why you can find a lot of good cells in a dead battery pack. Now let's take a look at this one. It says 14.8 volts and 4.4 amp hours. So divide the voltage by the voltage of one cell and you get four. So there are four batteries or cells in series. And the capacity is 4.4 amp hours. And because a typical lithium ion battery in standard 18650 size has about 2 or 2.5 amp hours, I guess those have about 2.2 amp hours and it means they are 2 in parallel. So in total there must be 8 cells in this configuration. So it's quite a beefy battery. Now let's try to open it and hope it's not gonna burst into flames. This is a bit tricky as always. And it looks nice, there are 8 cells in a nice green package. So let's open it further. Still no explosion. Can I get it out? There is some kind of a sticker. And I'm almost there. This is not the safest way to do it. And voila, I have the batteries. It reveals some marking. It says made in Canada. It sounds good, but there is nothing about the capacity. Looks nice. There are some connections, maybe even some temperature sensors. So there is the control board with the connector, some power MOSFETs, resistors, capacitors, small transistors, and what is this? Is it a temperature sensor or some current sensing shunt? That's weird. Because this wire going through it is quite thick. I guess this is sensing the charging or discharging current. So let's open it further because I'm expecting some chips from the other side. And yes, I'm going to cut into a beefy lithium ion battery pack. That's never a good idea. Yes, there are quite some chips with really a lot of pins. So there is a resistor with a very low resistance, 0 0.02 ohms. There are some capacitors, resistors, small transistors, diodes, one chip, another chip. This is EEPROM memory. And there is a crystal. There is probably a temperature sensor here. It 
looks like some thermocouple or thermistor. It's probably a thermistor. And from the other side there are three tabs sensing the voltage in between of the cells. So those tabs go here, here and here. This is necessary for battery balancing because if you are charging batteries in series you have to care about the voltage of each cell so that all cells are charged to the same voltage. It also senses the voltage when discharging and monitors the voltage of each cell or each section here. And when the first section reaches the minimum voltage it shuts down. So when there is a weak section which has a lower capacity it will shut down when this one reaches the minimum voltage even when the other sections still have some charge. And this is why a cell with low capacity can limit the capacity of the entire battery. The capacity of the battery is simply limited by the worst cell in it. Now I'm going to measure the voltage of those cells. So let's expose the connections. Cut this one because we don't need it. So it looks like this, there are two, two, two and two. There are four parallel pairs and they are in series. Now let's try to measure the voltages of those pairs. 0 0.26, 0 0.26 again, 0 0.25 and 0.23. That's quite low. So those ones seem quite old. I can't see any date of manufacture here. This one doesn't say any date or capacity. Now I will try to charge them, measure the capacity and also check the self-discharge rate. So I'm trying to recover those cells. Those two I am charging with this very dodgy Chinese charger which doesn't fit a European socket. So I have to use this extension plug which is a little bit modified. It doesn't work like this. So I have to shift it like this and now it works. And this is not the safest way to do it. And the other two are in this power bank, which can work as a charger because it doesn't have its own batteries. And those batteries are 1.67 volts. And this is definitely not the safest charger. And those are 3.4. So this one seems to be better at recovering those completely discharged batteries. And because with lithium ion batteries there is quite some risk of fire, I have prepared a special fire extinguisher from Croatia. So I've measured the capacity of all of those cells and they seem to be from about 800 to about 1000 mAh each and they are quite worn because this is less than half of the original capacity, but none of them is actually totally dead. I also tried to make more cycles with some of them and some of them seem to recover after more cycles. The capacity of this one went significantly up, this one also went up a little bit, but on the other hand this one went down and then back up a little bit. That's weird. So in this one all of the cells were quite worn but none of them was completely dead. But this one was completely different story. When I came across it one of the cells was 2.5 volts, one of them was 1 volt and the last one was 0 volts. The capacity of this one was 2.1 amp hours which is more or less the original capacity. This one was 2 amp hours which is very close but this one was totally dead. It was physically rotten and leaking something so there was no point of testing it. 
So opening a laptop battery is like a lottery. You can be lucky and you can find a battery which is almost like new. Or you can find a battery which is evenly worn and all of the cells have about half of the capacity. And you can also find a battery where one of the cells is completely dead and the other ones are like new. And after 24 hours the charge is good, good, nice, good, still good and this one is, this one is discharging faster. So it seems that lithium ion batteries can develop a high self discharge after being stored at very low voltage for a longer time. But it seems that after few cycles this self discharge can disappear. This is another cell from a laptop and it came at about 0.5 volts only. It had a really high self discharge rate. It would discharge completely overnight. I made 5 cycles with this one and now it still keeps charge after one year. So it seems that sometimes just 5 cycles can recover a battery with a super high self discharge. So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos.